Hi there. So today I'm working on a Seagate 1.5 terabyte drive, a Barracuda 7200.11. Uh, the actual model number itself is ST315003418S. Uh, the drive itself, uh, when powered on, is making a very slight buzzing sound. I'll see. I'll see if the the mic can pick this up. So I don't know if you heard that, but I'll try that one more time. It's a very faint mm, mm sound. So um, this uh, has been opened uh, by the client and uh, informed us that the drive is stuck. So I presume this will be a jam spindle and I am fully equipped to deal with this problem and have done hundreds if not close to the thousands so what we'll do is we'll do this together and uh, see what we find so uh, I'll start by opening it up you'll uh, also notice that I'm not wearing gloves uh, this particular problem uh, is rather intricate gloves definitely get in the way I am in a certified clean room I have scrubbed my hands so uh, normally uh, dust can be blown off this has already been opened uh, outside of a clean room but uh, dead skin is nasty for platters so I scrub my hands and uh, I also have a technique here that is going to help protect the, the platter surface as well which uh, you will see as we progress through this Uh, you'll also see this uh, template that I've got here and uh, this is just something to keep uh, all the screws in the correct order uh, it's uh, uh, something I've, I've put together just to help when I'm dealing with like a, a donor swap per se right let's uh, open up and see what we're dealing with okay so uh, the heads are stuck to the platter uh, they're normally uh, in a park area closer to the spindle there's no movement as the read right heads are actually probably bonded to the platter preventing it from spinning there's no turning of the spindle and uh, it looks rather clean I can see very very slight amounts of dust on it but nothing nothing too concerning so it's more than likely the spindles actual actually jammed on the drive so what we're going to do is let me just put this aside for a moment and uh, I'll explain what we're going to do so I designed a tool called base replace and this particular tool was a template uh, to keep the read write heads and alignment and platter balance uh, intact so that you're able to replace the actual hard drive assembly so I have one here uh, freely spinning and uh, it is of the same model being a 341AS and we're going to use this uh, to transfer so instead of changing like a platter swap what we're going to do is we're going to replace the base which is this part of the hard drive assembly uh, hence the name base replace uh, and what this does is this aligns to the drive and uh, enables us to tack down parts of the drive that we want to have uh, uh, no movement on etc so that enables us to to replace it so I'll go ahead and start this process and uh, we'll see what uh, comes of it so the first thing being is that uh, I need to remove the printed circuit board
Okay, I also need to remove the seal here just so that I can get access to the um, the read right head screw. And there we go. And what I like to do is just give this a little pinch. Because they can be extremely tight. So, in fact, this one is. There we go. So the, you'll see why I just sort of loosened it slightly, just a little pinch. Uh, I did not undo the screw or remove it. So to make this uh, transfer go smoothly, um, I'm removing this little seal so that the read right heads can um, lift and come out in one steady movement. Uh, we don't want any stiction of the seal on there when I uh, go to do this process. Um, also, I need to remove everything that will be transferred over. So I'll be using this in a moment. Uh, so what we've got now is um, just preparing the drive uh, for the base replace tool to go on. Actually, another common fault that I used to see quite often too is, um, let's see if we can see here, there we go, this little rubber stopper here. Alright, sorry about that, the camera just turned off. Um, so this little rubber stopper here would actually come dislodged and actually end up um, breaking and bouncing around inside the drive and uh, get caught in between the read right heads. It was another common fault of this particular model, uh, including uh, the actual breakage of this here. Now this is just, just a, a parking clamp uh, that's meant to prevent the read right heads from actually uh, going onto the platter's surface and staying in the park position when in transit or turned off. So um, this, this, these are getting more brittle with age as well, so uh, it's another p particular common problem. Uh, I, I collect them uh, so that I can replace them with uh, good ones when I need when I need to. Okay, so moving on. So I've loosened uh, the connection between the the printed circuit board and the read write heads. I'm leaving everything intact. If the uh, the platter itself is jammed with the heads on them, leave them on. It actually helps in this process because it helps keep uh, keep the original alignment. So what I'm going to do now is get some. I folded over a piece of aluminum tape, and I'm just going to put this on the bottom here so that when we put this on it actually sticks to this block so that when we when we go to remove the base uh, it'll leave this intact so it's easier to put back on so you'll notice that um, I've covered the platter now so it's um, I'm not going to get any contaminants or anything like that on it I've got access uh, to the screws outside of the drive and uh, what we're going to do now is just lock everything in place so that uh, we're able to transfer this 
So probably the first thing I'm going to do is I've now locked in the red right heads. Uh, this is a very very tight fit on here. Uh, the reason for this is that uh, this this clip here is actually torqued right down so it actually uh, will compress or it will actually expand once I take the, the screws out and fit rather snugly to this. Uh, so what we're going to do also is I have once again aluminum tape and I've uh, folded the ends so it doesn't stick to my fingers and um, I'm going to proceed with making my way around this uh, drive prior to undoing all the screws. And I'm just using a, a regular toothpick to push the tape in in fine areas. I find this is a non-abrasive tool to use. Um, I'm quite a fan, so they're quite handy to have around. And I push the, the tape down and I try to get a little lip, just a very small amount underneath the platter of the drive uh, to help uh, steady it. And I also when I lift this I don't want to uh, have the platters release or pretty much come out as a set. But um, you'll see that I've made my way around uh, the platter in only a few places. You, you don't have to go crazy. But uh, this part's important. So there is a, uh, a balancing clip on the outside edge of this. And it's much like uh, the balancing of a tire. Uh, that When you get your car, car tires replaced and you get it balanced and aligned. It's same theory here is that this is to uh, hold the platters in place so that they run smoothly and what actually happens is um, we need to keep this intact so undoing these screws uh, and removing that plate completely loses all balance uh, so this is a crucial step to keep this intact So you'll see that I'm doing this on the sides of the screws so that they can come out. Okay, we're looking pretty good. Oh, 
right, make sure you can see that. Um, so I've got that tied down in four places. I've got three areas of the uh, the platter tied into the base replace. I've undone the screws at the bottom. Uh, I have loosened the bottom screw to the heads and I've also added a screw to the top here because this is all coming out as a set. Um, so what we need to do now, actually you know what, I'll add one more. Alright, and let's see. Just tidy up around my workspace here a little bit. Okay, so the reason why I'm using this is because uh, the screws themselves I want to keep in the exact order. In fact, I want to keep this as original as possible. Uh, that way, as I remove these screws, I'll start putting them in, in an order that they were removed in. So these little diagrams sort of to help with that. And um, I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, start the process. So I'm just going to pinch these. Just slightly in an opposite rotation. Because if I was to pull one screw completely out, it actually makes the rest harder to get out. Uh, because they're so locked down that if I was to remove one screw and then just make my way around, by the time I got to the last one, uh, good luck trying to get it out. So it's important that you just do a slight pinch. And an opposite rotation and you won't have any problems. And what's nice about this process is, as you can see, I can freely work on top of this uh, without any fears of uh, contaminating the platters. So it's rather nice. Oh, I'll just change my band-aid actually hit your thumb with a hammer and I don't really want to share that with anybody so uh, just bear with me Alright, that's better. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is, um, now that I've just slightly pinched each screw, I'm going to keep the order on which I remove them.
Okay, so that's everything removed. Uh, the screws all removed, and we have a screw in the center point here. And this is locked. The read right heads. The the bottom screw. Uh, the hole for the screw is actually larger than the the screw itself. So there's an a movement or an access there that you can lose alignment on and that's why it's important to keep the read right heads actually stuck in place because that's going to help keep everything in one place uh, obviously we've now locked down the platters we've locked down the uh, the balancing clip here and and the top plate and we have uh, removed everything so that we're able to uh, remove the base and replace it with a with a functioning unstuck spindle so what we do here now is we just flip it over and uh, this is why we've we've uh, removed the seal here so this is just sitting uh, this doesn't need to be torqued and 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 hard to get out now because we've already loosened it uh, so the final step is just to remove the bottom screw so I have a replacement base here and the concept is uh, that we're going to lift this one out and replace it with a functioning one and reassemble the drive so uh, bear with me this is the, this is the tricky part okay so this is jammed there's no way I can move it it doesn't uh, move freely like this one and it's a really really common problem with this model of drive so we've locked the whole uh, internal hard drive assembly together and uh, what we're doing now is that uh, everything's doesn't move it uh, keeps the alignment keeps the balance uh, one other thing I'd like to mention too is that is a, a marking here and uh, although it varies at times but prior to putting this down I want to align it similar to where this one sits this will make putting this back on a lot easier so you'll see that I'm trying to line this very similar to the original one for when we put this back on so I just hit the uh, replacement hard drive assembly with some compressed air just to clean any dust or fragments that might be in there and then what we do we bring this up we align it with everything that's in place like so it's quite an interesting story on actually how I managed to come up with this um, I was seeing so many of these, uh, there was uh, forum information about um, people removing the platters and putting them in but they would always shake and the balancing wasn't quite right, there was people even hitting timing lights from vehicles onto onto card so that they could see the balancing and, and, and try and adjust the wobble on, on these actual drives and uh, it was really really frustrating because I was seeing so many of them and you know people were using aluminum tape that's definitely not my idea it's been around for a while but um, I, I just keep thinking well, I just need to lock this down and it came to me in a dream and I said, said to the wife at like five in the morning I need a pen and paper and I quickly drew this up and uh, by oh gosh by first thing in the morning or the the, the immediate opening of, of Lowe's uh, I, I was there getting everything I needed and uh, proceeded with uh, making one of these out of perspex uh, by hand and it was a pretty pretty rough design and uh, it worked the very first time uh, full recovery and so I was very excited but yeah 
I just always seem to be thinking how to solve problems in my sleep so it was rather entertaining but anyway let's see I've already knocked these over these aren't a big deal anyway it's uh, these ones here that, are, that I'm, I'm more concerned about so now we'll uh, we'll actually do those first so that we get the right order Now I haven't tightened these down, uh, I'm going to um, pretty much repeat the process uh, where I just oppositely tighten these just very slightly, sorry in opposites, one little bit at a time. we go so they've only just started to to clamp down so I'm just going to be very gentle and take my time so I'm just talking them a little bit more each time there So I've made different models of this too, but just for in-house use, because um, I've managed to be able to do this with certain types of SCSI drives, um, also the odd Western Digital, not really common, but it does happen. Uh, SAS drives, been successful on those as well. Right, now everything's lock back down and uh, we can now remove the base replace Now I'm just going to put the screw in slightly here because when I go to pull this back up obviously the tape's still stuck to it so um, that way I don't lift it up with it. And then we'll deal with the read right heads being stuck to the bladder. So 
so unfortunately this is on the outer edge I don't see this very often when it's this far out normally uh, it's it's actually further in closer to the uh, to the spindle uh, and it's a lot easier just to to pinch it back into the, into place but this one's on the on a, the the far edge so it's a, a lot worse uh, also there's some unknowns because I don't know what the client did to this uh, prior to um, looking at it did he try to move it did he move the heads here himself um, unfortunately I don't know so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to force this back into the parking position and uh, hope for the best there we go so I forced uh, counterclockwise uh, so that uh, the the platers themselves and any stiction was was bringing the heads away from the head assembly otherwise it's quite common for them to get damaged if you go the opposite direction uh, but now we're spinning freely uh, the drives back together all the alignment is intact uh, so all we have to do now is uh, put this bad boy back together actually I'm not happy how that just went on this there we go okay so um, I, in warning uh, I've been doing this a lot and sometimes I can make this process look pretty easy uh, but uh, anyone that I've uh, at, let attempt this on their own uh, bad things have happened so um, this is more of an educational purpose than anything else uh, so what we're going to do now is uh, I'm going to put the lid back on So this is a um, a two-part process as well, uh, assembling or disassembling the drive and putting the drive back together so that it's able to function is just one part of the process. Um, definitely not advisable to go plug this into Windows on a USB caddy or anything like that um, because uh, this is a drive that's in a degraded state anything's possible there's a mystery behind it uh, you don't really want to put this into a, a, a Windows environment that is going to cause read retries etc so what we're wanting to do is put this with a, an imaging tool like uh, the deep spa or PC 3000 and uh, that'll give us a uh, more control over the drive uh, rather than just simply plugging into Windows and hoping it's just going to come straight up for you and pull your data off uh, these can be problematic they can also uh, be um, sort of slow to come ready and to initialize so time delays are important when it comes to recognizing the actual drive itself alright let me see if I can just tighten those needed a little bit more leverage all right and last but not least
and there we have it uh, we shall report on how this goes uh, I'm gonna see if I can make another video with um, the actual cloning process of this drive we're also gonna see what it's going to do uh, there are some unknowns unfortunately this was opened by the client so um, there's still mystery to why the read write heads were out that far I mean anything's possible uh, so unfortunately um, you know it'd be nice to, to do this one that was untouched but you know this is a great example on how I go ahead with this particular problem and our success rate is extremely high thanks for watching okay welcome back we're uh, on the second part of the process with uh, the base replace drive that we did uh, the 1.5 terabyte Seagate and um, I'm going to now attempt to clone the drive uh, now that we've actually uh, replaced the spindle motor enabling the drive to spin back up uh, correctly so we'll put power to the drive Now it's not unusual for this drive to behave erratically uh, after this process. Also there's an unknown because of the drive being opened by the client and also the unknown of how the read write heads got to the very outside edge of this drive. So we have a busy icon here. You may hear the drive clicking. It's also attempting to, cali uh, to calibrate and uh, initialize. And it's not unusual for this to behave this way. Uh, a little bit of patience goes a long way. Alright, the drive's come ready. We'll attempt to access the drive. And there it is. We have a full uh, capacity, serial number, model number, etc. The family of the drive is a 2D Brinks. We will start the utility. And rule of thumb is uh, we will back up the resources of the drive. Uh, and obviously, here we go. This is to uh, prevent any uh, damage to service area modules uh, that can also be replaced if necessary. Uh, then the next task is we will actually what we'll do is I have a, a secondary drive here attached uh, so that we're able to clone two uh, it's on ATA one the uh, original or, or drive that we've replaced the uh, spindle with is on ATA zero and what we're going to do is start a new task and we'll call it uh, spindle I'm going to uh, select the source drive I'm going to make a data copy. I'm going to go to the secondary drive on ATA1 that we're cloning to. Now this part's important is that we're going to uh, build a head map and what that is is it's going to detect and map the location of each individual read write head uh, so that we get we get the options to disable individual read write heads etc uh, because obviously these heads have been traumatized we're not sure what heads will function correctly uh, so uh, it's important to actually get this list So what I'll do is I'll, I'll cut this, uh, this map short for demonstration purposes only. And what we'll do is I will attempt to read the first sector. The first sector was read. 
we have a green indication here. Any sector that is red uh, is automatically duplicated to our destination drive. That way, uh, as we bounce around the drive working out what's going on, no matter what we read, will actually be duplicated. So essentially, we've just recovered that sector of the drive or that particular area of the drive. So what I'm going to do now is you'll see that this is head zero. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start the cloning process. And head zero is cloning marvelously. So each green sector is now automatically duplicated to the destination drive. So this is a, this is a great way for recovering data off a drive that's problematic. We're now on head one, head two, and we've run into a slow area of the drive. More than likely going to get a bad sector here at some point and there's one located there so this is head three that's actually ca causing this issue right now oh it's gone into head two let's have a look which head is doing this head two so what we can do to stay away from this area is i can actually disable head two it's now skipped it and moved on to head three and started cloning so this is a valuable tool for uh, uh, recovering data for a drive that's traumatized where read write heads can be selected so I'm just going to stop this uh, so essentially the the base replace uh, process was successful uh, we now move on to the area of the cloning of the drive uh, how far we'll go uh, with this uh, it all depends it can take days uh, it can be done in a few hours it all depends what the drive is going to do itself, uh, but obviously uh, we're pleased that we've got full access to the drive and I can now proceed with attempting to clone the entire drive to recover the data. So I hope you enjoyed this video, uh, hopefully there will be more to come, uh, stay tuned and uh, hope you enjoyed it.